Types of departmentalization. Hi, I'm Bill Carmody. I'm excited today to talk to you about the types of departmentalization in organizations. So what is departmentalization? It is an organizational structure that separates people into groups or departments based on a particular set of criteria. These departments have their own leadership and work together as to complete tasks. With large or complicated projects, multiple departments may work together. So in other words, it's another way to organize a company. So why do companies departmentalize? The primary objective of a business is to choose the implement the de departmentalization that could include maintaining control. Okay, I wanna control how my actual business gets done. I wanna simplify operational process. I'd like to group specialized activities together. I'd like to increase overall efficiency and ensure responsibility and accountability. So by grouping things together that makes sense to me, I can actually make sure I have a better degree of control and hold the accountability into the individuals that are responsible for that particular work. So there are popular types of departmentalization. One is functional work. What is the thing that needs to be done and who's going to do it? The next is product. So I can organize my departments based on which products are being launched. I can look at the customer and say different groups of customers require different expertise. So I'm gonna separate out, for example, my consumer, uh, consumer groups with uh, my B2B groups or my businesses to business. So if I'm looking to actually work with more businesses, I might have a department over there working with the B2B and there's a B2C group that's working with direct to consumer. Geographical. So we might say, okay, I'm looking for territories. So I'll group my departments based on North America, Europe, Africa, et cetera. Or maybe it's process. There are specific processes. So I'm thinking these are my front end processes. And so I'm going to have these groups work together. These are my back end processes. And so I'll have these groups work together. Or it could be a division, independent lines of business operating as separate companies. So for example, if I'm going to say, hey, I know that this part of my business is very different than this, then I'm going to have a division around the types of lines of business we actually operate. So for example, if I have a publishing business, I want to say, okay, all the things that come to do with distribution of books would go over here. But I might have a ghostwriting division where I'm actually helping people write their books. So that would be a different division. And I also have the promotions and publicity department, which is promoting the books. That's a different division. So there's a lot of different ways to slice and dice inside of an organization. And so as you're thinking about how you organize your organization, it's really important how you place and stack your company. There are advantages and disadvantages to both. And the key for you as you're thinking about these things is what you set up is going to organically grow. And so if you think through like five years in the future, 10 years in the future, what is it that is most important in your organization? That will help you figure out how you organize and you can separate out your departments based on the needs of the organization and the growth and the scale you're gonna see. In the very beginning, many individuals are gonna wear the same or multiple hats, right? So today I'm in marketing, tomorrow I'm in operations, right? But over time, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that these functions are divided up so that you can scale. You want to simplify to multiply. In order to simplify, you want to think about how you're going to departmentalize in the best way that's going to scale with the way your organization should be set up from the very beginning. 